What was the, the job you had to do when you had to dress up as a schoolgirl? Yeah, that was actually... I laugh about it because that's just the humour, isn't it? Um, so I was... There was a job... There was a guy who... It was over 120-something offences. He'd been committing acts of um, touching... And it was getting a little bit worse. Each offence was getting a bit worse. So it started like over over clove touching, then it was upskirts and stuff like that. And it's all schoolgirls. Um, they tried surveillance, couldn't get him. He was super, super CCTV aware. They had one grainy image of him where you couldn't even really see his face. And they just couldn't couldn't get him. Like just couldn't get him. So they said, we're going to put a decoy out um, and see if we can, if he takes the bait, basically. And I was a decoy. And I'd done hundreds of decoy jobs that had never worked, ever. Um, and they said, it, it's the TSG were my safety. And they're like, the, you know, like the, what you see at the football. They're in the vans, like, so they're all lads. They were my safety. And they gave me a school uniform and said, can you go and put that on? This is your outfit for the thing. And when I walked back in, and we can imagine, late 20 something year old and a school uniform looks ridiculous. They were giving me loads of banter. It was funny. And for two weeks, I just stood in this area where we thought he might appear. Their intelligence, I didn't have the intelligence they had it. Um, we had a full team on it. We had a, you know, officers, bin men. We had a house, people in houses in the back of vans. They, I was properly surrounded in case he, he came out. Um, and then the last day of the operation, my dirty phone rang. And it was the senior investigating officer, and she said, "Just end there because he's not, he's not coming." I was like, "Okay," but I didn't expect him to. Um, so I'm start, I just literally put my phone back, went to start walking, and I don't even know why I did it, but I just turned around like this, and I saw this guy in a dark black hat, jacket, all dark clothes, and he was like creeping around the corner. You know, you get the wall, and then it's like I've got a bush above it, and he was like creeping around it like this. But I didn't think. A Nothing of it. Um, and I probably didn't because when I was there for two weeks, I couldn't believe how many men in white vans, like wolf whistle, all your way out the window, and the girls are in school uniform. I was like, that's mad, that. Because they're quite clearly girls of school age. Um, so I started walking, and then I just heard behind me, and I didn't even get to turn around, and he grabbed me around the throat and pulled me to the floor and ejaculated all over me. And I was just like, is that actually, I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. Like, is that real? Like, I don't know. And what felt like the long time it was, and it was like literally a couple of seconds, they obviously jumped on him, got him, nicked him. And I had a camera on my backpack and we caught it on the camera. You caught him creeping, undoing his trousers, masturbating to the point of got, he got me. And then when he got me, his hands on me, he just ejaculated. And it was him. It was the guy. What did he get? I don't know. He went to prison. I don't know what sentence he got. Like 10 months, 12, a year? I, I, I think it was multiple years, but not, not much. Not, not for what he'd been doing, for the volume of offences. Why is the, the, the prison sentence is so lenient with sex cases? I no Because idea. there's so many of them? I literally don't know. I, I think the, the sentencing is, it's not a deterrent, is it? It's, it's just ridiculous. I don't. There's no. I don't feel like a lot of the sentence is a punishment. No, because that's why they keep re reoffending. Yeah. But once they've got it in their mind, that that mindset can't be changed. Yeah. That's the scary thing about sex cases, man. Like their mind is gone. Yeah. But Russia, life in life in prison. Yeah. Obviously with wars and stuff. I'm not getting into all that shit. But the 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 laws for sex cases is spot on. Australia mm -hmm. take their passports, take their driving license, can't leave the country, can't change their name. The UK, they can change their name for less than 20 quid. They yeah. can be a different person. They can then do what they want to do, move a, move to a different country, move to a different place, and they've got a new identity. Like, yeah. The laws are terrible here. Kid in Scotland raped a 13 year old and they get community service. Yeah, that's, but that's not on, man. No. But, and the thing is, they're so protected, not just outside the prison, in prison as well. Yeah. There needs to be certain things put in place that these people need to be kept away from kids. Like people are just coming out and they're put in front of schools and they're staying in whatever they want. Like it's, they're so well protected, it's unbelievable. And things need to change because things seem to be getting worse. I don't know if social media's made it worse. Mm. Do you think with mobile phones and technology now, it's easier to be undercover? Do you think it's more difficult? I wouldn't do it now. Why? Because even if you create a fake profile, which you would need, 
you still got to have some kind of interaction with it. That You'd be managing like 30, 40 accounts to try and make your one account seem real. You know, if you meet somebody, you do just find them on Instagram and add them on Instagram or on Twitter or whatever it might be. But how can you do that? I, I couldn't think of anything worse. My job now, my real job, I work in cybersecurity and we deal with fake accounts all the time and we get them taken down. But you would have to have like, and we have fake accounts, but you would have to have a huge volume to make your one look real. So that's a full-time job, isn't it? Just sitting there constantly interacting with your, and we do all live our lives online. So to go out and be deployed and say, I don't have it, do you though? Like that's, that's not gonna work. How many jobs did you do undercover? I have no idea. What was the hardest one you done? Uh, probably the paedophile stuff. What was that like? You felt like you was doing a good job. And again, it's only now I've left that I think about these things. Um, you're doing a good job. That you're, you're, you're saving someone because I would be, nine times out of ten, I'd be playing the, the, the child. Um, so if they're saying these horrible things that they're going to do, to me, I'm an adult and I know that they might say that to me and I can process it and I didn't process it, it's only now I process it. But if that's a genuine child, that's not right, is it? Like, how can they process that when they're that young and they've got their whole lives ahead of them? It's just, it's just not right. Like, I used to be happy it was me and not the kid because I don't know how you would deal with that as a child. I just don't know. What was the first Peter Fool job you done? It was an online case where they'd been speaking to, um, so it was actually a, the unit, the paedophile unit, um, were talking to this guy online, but they were getting suspicious, it was on Skype, but he was getting suspicious that um, he was a copper and he said he wanted a call, a video call on Skype. Um, so they called me in and said, you need to speak to him. I had to read the transcript so I knew what the conversation had been. And speak to him and the conversation had been horrific like it was disgusting and then I just went on to Skype with him and he was talking to me and I was trying to make it in my own head I was trying to make him see I'm a kid like I was saying to, he said oh what have you been up to and I said I've just got home from school and he went oh cool but like didn't bat an eyelid and I was thinking that's not that's so weird isn't it like it's just weird um and he said he had a present for me he was a proper I mean I know they're all very strange, but he, the stuff he was saying was just, he had kinks about picking me up. And I was like, I, I don't even know what, what that is. And he kept saying, when I see you, I'm going to pick you up. And I was like, oh, okay, but I'm heavy. <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm going to pick you up. And the DC that had been speaking to him was like, yeah, he keeps talking about this picking up thing. I don't know what he's on about. Um, and he said, I've got a present for you. Do you want to see it? And I was like, what is it? And he, I was like, oh, God. He's undone his trousers, showed me his penis. But I've got a room full of, like, well, not a full, but a couple of DCs, and they're like, oh, like, they know what's happening. They can hear the conversation. They're like, oh, she's just been showing his dick. Um, and he's touching himself. But I, I can't even, I, my face is like, so I just shut the lid of the laptop because I'm like, I don't know how to do, <laughs> what the fuck? I wasn't expecting to do that. I thought it was going to be a chat. Um, and then I rang him back once I'd calmed down and like, I'm not going to, we, 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 well, I laughed because I, I'm like, I don't know even how to deal with this. And if I don't laugh, I'll cry and be in a dark room for years. So I laughed and um, I phoned him back. He said, did you see that? And I was like, see what? And he was like, I did that for you. And I was like, did what for me? He said, did you not see it? I said, no, just do it again. And he went, I can't do it again. And he'd obviously ejaculated. And I said, like, just do it again. And he was like, I can't do it again. I did that for you. He said, why did you hang up? I said, my mum came in the room. Again, like, I'm trying to give him messages that I'm a child and he's just not getting the message or not that he gives a shit and that's why he's on the phone probably or is on the phone. Um, but when I was saying do it again, he was getting angry because he was like, you don't understand. Um, and then he said, I'm going to come and see you. And we'd arranged to meet. And he was coming to Liverpool Street Station. Um, and the team said, we need you to be there because we think he's quite he's quite suspicious. You know, he's obviously asked for a call before because he wants to make sure you're real and you're not a police officer. Um, we need you to come to the, the um, train station with us. 
He said, but don't worry, you're not going to interact with him. You're just coming to the station just so he sees you and will approach you. I said, all right. So we went to the train station. This obviously uh, plainclothes officers waiting to nick him because that in itself is an offence to travel. And he got off the train and he was walking towards me. And then I just sort of bypassed like that and they just swooped and nicked him and took him out. And he, um, we had to, I went to court with him and um, his face just hit the floor when I said, they said, is it correct you was acting in a covert capacity? I said, yes, I was a covert police officer. Did you engage with this gentleman? Yes, that's the man I spoke to on the laptop. That is the man I saw at the train station. And he was just like, he couldn't believe it. But he, he knew it could happen. He'd been to prison before. Um, he was on the, the uh, register. But he wasn't, he, if he got, he wasn't, he's, his wants were too much that he couldn't think about what could happen to him. He wanted it too much.